the madman. Welcome to custom card review number three. This time around, I'm taking your advice and I'm going to be giving a rating on design and a rating on balance. Uh, let's start with Anvina Tig. Five mana, three, four. Start of game, if your deck contains no damaging spells, summon a Sunwell. That's just a card that's on the field. Full damage, plus five. Ridiculously overpowered. You might be asking, how could you even take advantage of this? Well, the easy way is Primordial Glyph, but other ways are Steam Surger. You get the Flame Geyser, which is two mana deal seven. You have Ruby Spellstones, which can generate spells. Archmage Antonidas, which if you just play three spells, you're gonna get three fireballs, which are gonna deal a total of six plus six plus six plus five plus five plus five damage, which is 33 damage. So I like the idea of the card. So I'm going to give the design a five star rating. It's cool to have a start of game effect, which is very unorthodox. But for balance, I'm going to give it one star. This is ridiculously overpowered, but it can be saved. You do some testing, but I think spell damage plus two or spell damage plus three is the right place to be. Cyberb! A neutral mech, one mana, one three. At the start of your turn, play an entrance sound of a minion in your opponent's hand. So cute and fair. I mean, it's one mana, one three, and it just gives you a little bit of information. So I'm a little bit torn on how to rate the design because it's cute in that it gives you extra info, but Knowledge of sounds shouldn't be part of the game, and also Hearthstone is designed to be a accessible game in which you don't have to have your sound on. And I was thinking, would Hearthstone ever make a funsies set? And I think that playing entrance sounds is just a little bit too extreme. So I'm going to give design one star here because I don't actually think it can ever legitimately be played. Uh, for balance, I'll give it five stars though, because a one mana, one three, uh, which has a small benefit. Sure, that's fine. Ancient Power. Discover an overload card. It loses overload. I think this is really good design. It is similar to Primordial Glyph, and it's in Shaman, and I've always thought of Shaman as kind of like a brother to Mage. So overload tends to be a benefit because you're paying less up front, and then you pay some mana afterwards. So probably actually weaker than Primordial Glyph. And I was also thinking, would this even see play in even Shaman? And a lot of the overload cards are control cards, so you probably don't want to put them in a tempo deck anyways. So I think the design of the card, five stars. Balance of the card, five stars. It's the right mana cost for it. And I don't think you can raise it or lower it by one. Possibly good, possibly like a little bit too weak to be played, but good card I'd say. Little Pursuer. Zero mana, zero two. Rush. Beast. Very cute. It's fair from the perspective that zero mana tends to be one one stat line, so this is two stats, but the no attack is really weak, but you get Rush to balance it out. Uh, you can discover it with Deathstalker Rexar, and that would be a pretty good Rush addition to your card. Meant to be played alongside buff cards like Houndmaster, Dire Frenzy, there's a question to be asked on whether or not this is too confusing for new players, so perhaps it should be rare instead of common, possibly even epic. So for design, I'm giving this five stars, solid idea, excellent naming. Uh, for balance, four stars just because it might be a little on the weak side and not actually see play, but it's not like you can lower or raise the mana cost. The only thing, the only question here is, is it too overpowered at three health? And I don't think so. Goblin Healbot, 3 mana 4-2, mech, battle cry, deal 8 damage to your hero, gain 8 armor, it's for warriors. I think the idea is really cool, where you are going to be transforming your damage into armor, or your health into armor, which is something that you want to do, because you have shield slam, you have the reckless flurry, and it can activate battle rage. Alexstrasza could be good, that's typically running Control Warrior, which is where you would probably see this card. And there's Mortal Strike also, which rewards you for being in a lower health. I feel like this card would be good alongside more cards printed, such as Mortal Strike. That said, there's a serious drawback to the card as well. You cannot play this when you are 8 health or lower, because otherwise you will die. So therefore, I think the card is just too weak. I mean, the exchange of this doesn't really warrant only playing a 3 mana 4-2. Even at 3 mana 4, 3 I think would be too weak, or 3 mana 3, 4. So I think we push this up to a 3 mana 4, 4. The design of the card is good. I like the idea of transforming 
uh, health into armor, so I'll give it five stars for that. Uh, I think the balance is one star, drastically too weak at the moment. I think three mana four four is fair because even though you might consider this an advantage, uh, remember that control decks aren't really looking to play three mana four fours. Hot potato, a hunter one mana spell. Give your opponent the potato. If this is in your hand at the end of your turn, destroy it and deal five damage to your hero. It actually provides a little bit of a mini game and a mana sink to both players. The hunter gets hit the first time because when you draw it, you must play it, otherwise you'll take five damage. The opponent then has your choice of, ah, do I want to take five damage or should I play it and then like continue the hot potato game, in which case both players might be at permanent minus one mana if they were to always play it. But it's not always right to play it because sometimes it is right to, uh, something is so pressing that you cannot play a hot potato and then you take your five damage and you play your important card instead. There is also the drawback as the hunter that you do miss your draw. So it's meant to be for obviously some sort of deck with pressure in it, uh, because one mana deal five is good, and one mana make it so that both players have one less mana is arguably good. So I think that the design of the card, five stars, balance of the card, probably a little bit on the weak side, but you couldn't really improve it by much. Maybe make it one mana deal six damage. I'm gonna give it four stars on balance. It's Commander Garrosh, a warrior death knight. 10 mana, battle cry, summon all friendly rush minions that died this game. 0 mana, bulwark, spend all your mana, gain that much armor, so similar to the forbidden cards. And if you're control warrior, yes you're perfectly fine spending some turns doing nothing and just gaining 10 armor. The card is ridiculous because in order for your opponent to actually make any progress after you play commander Garrosh, they have to dedicate at least 10 attack to the board, and then at some point like that's ridiculously overplaying into a card such as Brawl. So, it's just too much. And some people have said, wait, is that even too powerful? I mean, Gul'dan is more powerful, right? But it's, gaining 10 armor a turn is actually just overpowered. Uh, it is so overpowered that I don't actually think you can salvage the idea. I mean, a battle cry on a Death Knight sounds like it could be cool to summon all friendly rush minions, but this hero power can never exist. Two stars for design, and then for balance, one star. It can never exist, and there's no salvaging it. Magni Lord of Iron Forge for five mana, battle cry, forge a custom hero power. So similar idea to Kazakis, first represented with your choice of armor, but it's always the same choice. Zero mana, gain one armor, one mana, gain three armor, two mana, gain five armor. After you choose it, you have the other decision of the weapon to go with it. 0 mana, equip a 1-1 one, one hammer, 1 mana, equip a 2-2 two, two blade, 2 mana, equip a 3-2 axe, and then you combine the mana costs into your new hero power. So it's a unique death knight in the idea that nothing happens the turn you play, you're just choosing your hero power, but a lot of flexibility in what you can do, and also interesting in that it could fit into both a tempo deck and a control deck. Because with control, you're probably looking to maximize your armor gain and minimize the cost of the hero power. Maybe you don't care for a weapon. Maybe you do have all the mana you want, and then you just maximize the armor and the weapon. And in a tempo deck, you wouldn't care about the armor, so you lower, you minimize the cost of that. You choose the zero armor, then you just choose the repeatable axe each turn. That said, I don't think it's necessarily that good in a tempo warrior deck because five mana to play this card, and then two mana to like get the axe repeatedly afterwards, maybe not that strong considering Gorhowl is a 7 attack weapon with like a lot of durability also. So where the card is probably overpowered though, is the idea that similar to the last card, 2 mana gain 5 armor is a lot. Uh, there is some amount of drawback in that you have to keep destroying your weapon, but maybe you choose the 2 armor and the 2 axe, or maybe you just, just do the 2 armor and the zero weapon. But yeah, the five armor is too much. So I would suggest perhaps one, two, and three armor being good enough. And then the bottom left weapon, the zero mana weapon being a one, two. Uh, as stands, I think the design is really cool. So I'll give it five stars. I'll give it a two star on balance. And that it's ridiculously overpowered, but like maybe not as overpowered as the others ones. 
and easy enough to fix with a few number fixes. Uh, next up we have a top-down design, as they call it, where you look at the flavor first and then you design a card around the flavor and then you balance around this flavor. A nod to the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. 8 mana, 8-8 eight, 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 warlock card, a Saigai, a tainted lion, battle cry, discard your hand. <laughs> Summon the dark portal and shuffle the dark queen into your deck. The dark portal stays dormant on the field. When it awakens, play all cards that you discarded. Target's chosen randomly. And the dark witch, uh, when you finally draw it and you play it, you awaken your dark portal. So meant for some sort of sick combo wombo where you discard a bunch of relevant cards and then draw the dark witch and then you play them all. Anyways, I think it's just way too convoluted. The creator tried to shove the flavor of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe into something. And I don't even think it really makes that much sense. Uh, you compare the card to Deathwing, and Deathwing immediately does something when you discard your hand and gives you a 12-12. This is just an 8-mana 8-8, eight eight, and you still have to deal with everything. So, it's drastically underpowered, first of all. I don't even know how to begin to salvage this. So for design, I'm going to rate it one star, based on the fact that, sure, the idea is cool, but they just put a bunch of flashy effects onto a lion, a witch, and a portal, I think. And for balance, it's so underpowered that I don't even know where to begin, one star. Dogfish. Can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Beast. Nice and easy, simple. I guess for design, this is an example of something that I might rate 3 stars. Because it's actually already a card in Shaman, Air Elemental, it just has a beast tag on it. It's probably been considered by the Blizzard team before. And on balance, I'm gonna say it's 5 stars. Like, it's completely fair. Uh, you would probably think about putting it in Hunter. Not sure whether or not you actually would. It competes with Dire Mole. Is one stat worth the can't be targeted by spells or hero powers? It's an interesting idea. They tested Air Elemental, it was nowhere near close to being good. Uh, but is a beast tag enough? And of course a nod to Deathstalker or Rexar, where the effect would be very good. And we got a spicy one to end it for you. Charles Worth, 8 mana, 4-4 four, four, neutral, battle cry, discover a new basic hero power, sew it on the back of your current one, and then whenever you use your hero power, it flips over to the other side. Now whether or not you can have one of the sides then become like a Death Knight hero power and still have the flippiness is a detail that's unclear, but I'm going to assume that you can. The idea is you'd want to put it on a Death Knight hero power, maybe the Paladin one, and then you get to summon three uh, Death Knights of the same turn, where you press the button on the Death Knight, and then you use the other one, Death Knight, other one, Death Knight. Uh, in the Quest Warrior, you can deal 8 damage 3 times potentially. There are some that it doesn't work with, or it's unclear on how it works with, like Hagatha or the Rogue Death Knight, but I think the unclearness is simply that it doesn't work with him. All in all, it's pretty creative, and I, I fought long and hard about whether or not this was balanced first of all, and the 8 mana 4-4 four, four stat line really isn't that big a concern, it's basically a spell. The way that I finally decided on it is, like, it's close enough to being balanced actually. It's similar to Shudderwalk in the sense that it's a hugely disruptive combo piece and it could create a bunch of decks, but that's not necessarily bad if it's balanced. But where I do have a problem with it is Shudderwalk is really specific and you have to play the Shudderwalk at 9 and combo it with like really specific cards. Whereas this is on something as prevalent as Hero Power, so it's going to be a serious limitation to design space forever because there's always wild. So on design I'm going to give it a 2 star and that it's pretty interesting but that it would ultimately never be done and on balance I'm going to give it 3 stars in that I feel like it's a very good attempt at balance and I couldn't think of anything too OP with it. Maybe from that perspective it's actually 4 stars on balance and it's just that it's so dangerous it requires testing. And those are the cards of the week! Pretty interesting stuff.